Hi everybody, good evening to the stream. I do hope everybody's fine, happy this evening, and I guess ready for a nice weekend. Hi Wendy, hi Judy. Hi Derek, good evening to you sir. Hope everybody's fine, happy and dandy. Glennies, good evening to you. Thank you for joining us. Just wait around for a little bit longer, let everybody come on board before we get started. Another warm evening. Well, certainly is where I am anyway. I hope I can pull this one off tonight. It's not an easy one. Michael, good evening to you. I hope you can, mate. I hope you can stay with it tonight. It's a blighter when these things go on. I've got a situation right now with my website. I've got two of them I can get to on WordPress, and the other one seems to have corrupted, and I can't find out how to get onto it. But there you go. We're full of all these things that keep going wrong. Tech is a lovely thing. When it goes right, it's good. When it goes wrong, it's a nightmare. Good, Judy. I'm glad you're happier. Excuse me, everybody. <laughs> that one that just appeared from nowhere. <clears throat> we get a few more minutes and let people catch up. I think we're pretty much just about on seven, so we get a few more minutes yet. Oh dear, I hope everyone's got some great plans over the weekends. I think Monday and Tuesday is not going to be so nice. Good evening, Teresa. Yeah, I hope uh, we do a good job with it. Jim, good evening to you, sir. I hope you're well. I hope you've got somebody in to do all these uh, chores for you tonight. <laughs> Probably haven't, but uh, there you go. It's the way it is. Right. Oh, don't ask, Teresa. Don't ask. Right. Okay, well, I shall probably get started, I think, because time is moving. Excuse me. <laughs> Wait a second. I've got to stop this. That's awful. No apologize. Oh. Sylvia, good evening to you. Uh, nice of you to join us. Right, a lovely Avo set. And these are one of Britain's most iconic and most beautiful estuary waders. And uh, it's a stunning bird at any time. And uh, for those of you who might be watching from America, you have your Avocet, but yours is brown as opposed to the black, if my memory serves me. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> you really need to get tech savvy, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, Jim. Well, let's hope you can stay with it, and uh, it'll, it'll be good, I'm sure. Let's hope so. All right, so now an Avocet. And I don't know why I chose this, because I do 
uh, like giving myself a bit of a, a job and this is uh, a job among jobs it is a very difficult bird to get it looking right Keith good evening to you sir um, and you know you get it wrong is gonna stay wrong especially in watercolor if it was an oil you can actually move it around and play around with that but once you've done it in watercolor if you see a problem that's it done deal so a lot of this evening to a point is going to be all about the drawing and um, I hope you can bear with that and I hope that um, you can get something from that process as well the painting of course it will take its course and it will do what it needs to be done but the I've got to get that drawing right or else there's very little problem for doing the rest of it Sue good evening to you um, yes Keith uh, my wife said to thank whoever cooked those cakes, thank you very much. She so, so thoroughly enjoyed hers, as did we all. So, hope you had a happy birthday, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of those cakes, and there uh, be more to, more to come, I'm sure. Right, now then, it's about planning. It's about planning. This bird is, the body of the bird is, if I work this out, there is one space two spaces, three spaces, four spaces, five spaces, and a bit. That's very, very crude. But basically what I'm saying is that the body of the bird fits approximately five and a bit times within the given space of the painting here. I haven't done this measurement. I'm just looking at that one. And that's just line of sight, basically. Um, so anyway, let's start looking at it. I want the tail to be up quite high so let's just put a mark in for the back and let us then put a ending in for the tail which is just below the back and I want it over one side and then I'm going to suggest that the back comes over like so and be prepared for a lot of erasure <laughs> especially if you're a Muse fan will have erasure all over the place. I digress. I'm just going to suggest these shapes and these marks in as quickly as I can. But they do obviously need to be totally accurate. So there's the nice long dark tail and the second wing underneath there. These are not tail, this are wing flights, primary wing flights. The tail is tucked neatly up underneath. It fits very very well but what you're seeing here are the wing flights and you've got a little bit of wind just picking up one of the feathers on the secondary part of the wing there one of the white ones and uh, I'm sort of taking my time looking at it very very carefully <sighs> yeah less of the intellectual part Jim we will see what happens you could get a lot of swearing if this doesn't go right. Is that intellectual? It's art speak. That's what I call swearing. Art speak. Diana, good evening to you. Thank you very much for joining us from Georgia. Well done, Jim. Take defeats me usually appeal to Wendy. Yeah, so do I, Judy. <laughs> Ask Wendy. All right, let's just bring that down. And let's just look at the shape of the head here. Now, this is already quite looking quite big. And by the time I get the feet in, let's just say that the body comes through here somewhere, or I get the legs in, there's not going to be the whole of the... the legs come down to, say, here. Then already I am way too big for getting the... Um, Part of the reflection. I don't want all the reflection because it looks a little bit silly. Excuse me. So I'm going to just start that again. I've got a few marks I can still see in here. So I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to try and reduce the overall size. And I'm just literally skimming around with a pencil right now just to see if I can reduce the bird down and take that wing flight up through there like so and then come back in with the bird's head like so and 
in with the throat it may be that I get the head better and therefore I can probably move the rest of the body according to the head I like so nice curve back on the back marks that comes down around the neck and the shoulder like that so that's not so bad it's got a nice dome to the top here but then there's almost a, an angle as that comes down like so to the to the beak and of course we've got this lovely beak now the difference between this and say a curlew apart from the color of course is that the curlew beak goes down i think the curlew beak or is it the wimbrel goes down one of them goes down i think it's the curlew and this goes up this is sifting through the mud and the curlew is disturbing like that with that other type of beak so hopefully that's not too bad it's line of sight it may be i've possibly got that a bit too big let's just put a mark onto that one two so let's put that on there no you know that's not it's possibly quarter inch too long i can look at that before i sort of set it up and paint it to see so we're going to come down here and nicely into the chest which straightens up and then goes down like so so where are the legs well the legs come folding if you take a line if you tuck the wings in as it were and do a bit like a what's the best way i call this like a norman armory shield you know that sort of not teardrop it comes down to that like point if you do something like that that's in a sense containing the wing uh, although of course we know that that goes further out that way to take in the nice point of the primaries but then you can take a line down this way like so and you can see the muscle structure that comes into the first leg and so let's put the first leg in there a little tuck round keeping the light excuse me the light and then a little bit coming this way nice and square up to its bottom and then that will come up like so and form into the back something like that is where our bird has got to be i hope i've got this about right it, i'm gonna i'm reassessing it like so i'm thinking that maybe that's got to come down just a slither more so and the leg into there and then that comes up just giving me a little more depth here and then that will come out like so all right so i'm going to use the eraser again and just take out lines that i don't want i don't want anything confusing me further on you got to be careful how much uh, mucking about you do in here because at the end of the day a lot of this bird is going to be white paper and the last thing you want to do is make it so grubby that it looks anything but white so just take care of how much uh, drawing you do and how much erasing you do but there we go I think we're somewhere where we should be with that and then just coming into there tuck that around like so and we've got that leg and then you don't have the same arrangement this is into what would be the sort of shoulder part and then that will come down a nice angle down through here to the first and the elbow which is nice like so and then you've got a little section there obviously it's a lot more but this is now in water so we've got the nice joint there so that's pretty much how that should look then you have this one here which is going across and coming down the other side look how it works so it's coming down pretty straight but not that straight so something like that and it is almost here before you see the elbow but you don't see too much of it because it's it's a little bit messed up with a shadow a little bit thicker at that point and then it comes down like so and then into the water here somewhere so now there is a, a little bit of work to do on this this is not quite reading true 
So let's just come back in here and let us take that through. Just check the chat because I haven't been watching the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Luke. Hi Luke, good evening to you sir. I hope so mate. If you like more birds, if you're a birder, then hopefully you'll enjoy this one. I actually posted a little, I did a, um, what made me do this as well, I did a little oil study of uh, one of these birds. Well actually I've got to say, it's the same bird. I did an oil study for Instagram which I put out on my pledge today. So that's sort of gone out about, I don't know, about 6 o'clock, something like that. Something like that is our leg. Just trying to make sure it's not looking as though it's broken. And that can come down in a little shape like so. And then we've got a little bit here. Now what's happening here is this bird is uh, feeding. And it is disturbing the mud ahead of it. And as it feels or senses uh, a crustacean move out of the mud ahead of it, it'll go down and it'll take it. And uh, yeah. They're just, it's wonderful to watch them feeding. Sometimes they'll take the beak and they'll shovel it through like that as well. All right, now we've got a little bit of tension in the water breaking through there. And I think we're probably not far off that. So now let's look at that. Now we've got a bit of this reflection that's coming down. I'm not going to get all the reflection in, guys. I'm sorry about that. It's not going to happen. Um... I'll just take that that way but we're going to get some of the reflection in but not all probably just enough to see that there is a reflection and not a lot more than that i'm afraid something like that and then we've got the one coming back this way with the other leg and that will come down like so and the reflection will go off like that so, as I said, not too much of a reflection. Um, but in a sense, it doesn't really make a lot of odds. We can just put in maybe a, a sense of the bill going through like so. Just enough to tell you that the reflection is there. What isn't in this photograph is the fact that... Uh, oh, good evening, Ben. Uh, nice of you to drop in. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, sir. Hope you're all ready. And uh, yeah, so what isn't in this picture is the fact that you've got um, little mud showing. Now, in other pictures, there are degrees of mud bank that is just uncovering in the water. So to make this a little more interesting, I do propose to put one or two little bits and pieces in here like this. And each piece has got a little reflection coming down just to give it a bit more interest Break it up and let it come through the reflection so that you have real objects as regards as, as well as um, reflected objects. Just to give it a bit more interest in the bottom. But the rest is sort of just how it is. Just really beautifully um, set up with not a lot going on. I want to try and preserve. Now the chances of me doing that is I may have to come in with a little bit of body colour just to do that I'm just checking where the eye is and I think in honesty I've got the eye a little set back too far it's going to bring it forward to about there it's hardly any different but there is maybe just enough let that come through there like so across the back and then let that come down and back into there just checking the head shape again a little bit more of a dome at the top here and then let that come down into the beak you can't see too much detail in the beak there is obviously an upper and a lower mandible but they're very very hard it's a dark beak and it's a very very slender looking beak so it's very hard to pick up all that uh, subtle detail from this distance so i don't propose to try and put too much of it in just checking that into there so now we've got that. I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to put the throat in a little bit. It's quite a chunky little throat as they go. 
and it's got a little muscle tone here and put that in like so little curvature and then just a little shape one or two little shapes that are suggesting movement within the neck itself and let that come down now the neck comes up at this point like so but I have got a dark line there which I want to lose I want to leave that as white because I want to suggest here the dark markings of the feather coming up and over the back a bit more pencil going on um, where are we? yes good uh, I shall be there promptly sir don't worry and the coffee pot will be on alright so that comes over the back you get a nice little rise in the shape can't quite see what's causing it it could be a feather that's just moved up or it could be the overall shape at that point not too sure so I'm just going to follow my instinct and draw it as I see it that's the thing now this is something that you all really should take on board when you're drawing something and I had a gentleman with me last night lovely guy uh, he is really into drawing and and it's not just him I'm just I'm not singling them out I'm not naming names but it's just one example of I see lots of it in my classes too where people are drawing something and they draw what they think they know you know they think that the handle or something is going one way and they know it's got a handle and they assume it's going one way without actually looking and inadvertently they draw it completely wrong and the old saying is that you draw what you see and not what you know and that really is true I'm just putting a few of these little scallops in here to the shape of the back and then they come up like so and some beautiful soft greys caused by the light feathers over the dark feathers I hope I can probably get one or two of those in just very suggestive and then that just comes up and leads into that little raised feather over the back there like so and then we've got the shape of the um, wing the one on this side that's this wing that you're seeing and that goes on up into here so it's not just a thin feather that's black there are several of the final feathers that are black but you're only seeing that one there and I'm putting in dark mark because I will be using paint over the whole of that area so I can get away with that it's not a problem I'm just going to put in a little extra shape where we can just about pick out and make out the um, this one here is the end of the feather on the other wing that's just coming up and they're resting something like that as they are as it's sitting there and it's feeding and then you've got a few dark areas within the tail flute there that comes up and down like so so what we've got here is a little bit wrong there so let's just check this we've got a line coming down now this isn't really a line so I'm going to put it in very softly and then just gently put the eraser over it but you've got a sense of the tail coming down and into the rump area and the anal area of the bird so I'm just going to put that in just going to gently leave that so I can see it but take the rest out of the out of the storyline as it were okay so hopefully that might need to be I think this is too far down so once again it's a judgment I'm gonna take a little line up there just as a suggestive line and then I'm gonna run that off that way like so and that gives that other feather a little more room to come into being so let's do that into there and up there like so all right that I think looks a bit better but then how do I get and address this section here so we've got this part here of the wing which is quite high and then there's that little bit of grey where the dark is running through there but there's a white feather over the top of it and I've got a little shape there and I'm drawing shapes I'm not drawing feathers 
I am drawing what I see and not what I think I know. And that really is the whole crux of the whole thing. And I think that is probably closer to the shape that I need. So I'm going to bring that down. That's a nice deep well there comes across here almost straight in that line. Then it just dives down this way a little bit and scoots back and starts giving me some other feather structure or ends of feather structure and shapes through there like so. And then that just clips around the end of that feather like that. I think that's probably, and that could come over a little bit more on that down to there. Something like that, I think. Just tidy it up so I don't get confused. And that, I assure you people, is very easy for me to do, get confused. Like that. Okay, now I'm looking at that. That needs to come down sooner and into there. And this is the whole thing. It's all about the drawings. All about um, checking on drawing lines and the values that you're going to be putting in. So the, the drawing is really important. Without a drawing, you don't really have a painting to worry about. So you must get this section cooking and working. Take that out through there. Now we've got our lovely muscle structure we put in there. We've got our legs, we've got everything. Now all this business here of running around with the eraser, I've dirtied the paper. Easily taken and cleaned up with a good um, putty rubber, not a problem. But the problem is that um, if you keep doing it, you're going to make the whole of the surface grimy. So what is always a good idea if you're doing an awful lot of drawing is just take a piece of kitchen towel, rest it down so that you do not keep smearing pencil or carbon over the whole paper. And this is particularly more prone to it because this is um, a rough surface paper and therefore it will just hit on all the peaks of the rough paper and make it look daggy and you don't want that. Um, oh, okay, Tracy, you can't see the chat. I don't understand. Some can, some can't. Is anybody else watching this that can't see the chat? <laughs> You're not going to be able to let me know, are you? Because <laughs> you can't see the chat to say anything. How silly am I? <laughs> um, yeah, okay, well... Mm. Well, I hope people are not too many are missing it, but uh, right. So there is my ever set. I think that I'm just going to measure the back of the head to there to there. One, two, three, four. Go from there to there. One, two, three, four. That's good. And that again. Yeah, three of the heads. So one, one, two, three. Good. I think the proportions are pretty good. I mean, you know, we can always do a trace or whatever, and I don't think you're going to get it too much, but I think we're pretty good with that. And you're going to suggest that little line through there, just to give you an idea, not to forget where the shadows are under the bird and on the legs themselves. Around the back here, of course, we will see those. All right, I think I'm pretty much ready. How far are we? Half an hour in, so that's not bad. Half an hour for the sketch, I do not think is too bad. Now, what I do want to just suggest is there is a couple of little um, elliptic ripples that are running around where the bird has disturbed the water. I'm just going to suggest a couple of those in. Just nothing special, just I can come back in. They may even disappear under the paint, I do not know. But the whole of this is now going to be a wash. And I'm going to wash it down with the lovely blue. It's going to control it as best I can. I do want to keep it out of here. I do want to keep it out of here. If, however, I miss it and I go into some, I might be able to lift it. And I, hopefully I can. But it's a little bit of control. Let's just see what happens. This could be the shortest stream I've done, or it could be 
a very long one as we repeat it. <laughs> but the other thing is, now this is something else that you ought to think about as well. And if I've done this myself, and I didn't mean to do that, take that off. A little bit careless with that. One thing you can do, if you've done a cracking drawing that you really do appreciate and you don't want to lose it, then may I suggest that you uh, can do one of two things. The quickest way is to do a scan. If your painting is not too big, if you've got an A3 scanner or you've got an A4 scanner where you can put just the bird in for getting the rest of this, then you can take a copy of your drawing. And if your lovely drawing you've done absolutely goes wrong, um, if, sorry, I was reading Ben. <laughs> Cheers, Ben. That will tell if anybody is in, Ben is saying, if anybody is in a full screen mode to watch this, you will not see the chat. What you do need to do is press your ESC, your escape key, to exit full screen, and it will bring it down to a more reasonable size, but then you'll see the chat down the side. I hope that clears that one up for everybody. Um, I'm so dumb I didn't think to think that, but thanks, Ben. Thanks for that, mate. Now, where was I? Yes. Uh, if you've got a small scanner or even a larger scanner, uh, some of us have got three A3s, A2s, or A4s. If you've got, even if you've got one of these, um, what do they call it, these all-in-ones, these A4 all-in-ones that sits on our desk that does uh, scanning, it does our printing, and it sort of copies folders and files that we've got, one of those is ideal. If your drawing can be fitted on in this fashion, in an A4 manner, then you can actually make a photocopy of your lovely drawing. So, Oh, I don't know what that was. Um, but basically what happens is that if this painting went awfully wrong, then you've got genuine work, but then you simply do a trace or something else that is called um, uh, trace down paper. You could lay this on a new piece of watercolor. I don't know how trace down paper works on watercolor paper too well, but certainly you could do a trace, reverse it, put it onto your paper and redo your drawing and have another go. I hope I don't mess this one up because I haven't got time to take an impression, scan it or anything else. But you get the idea. It does mean to say that if you've done this, you've done a cracking drawing that you're really proud of, but you, if it does go wrong in the watercolour stage, you do at least have a backup where you've scanned it. You can take a trace from your original drawing and that is not cheating in any way. That is merely taking precautions to almost like when you take a load of photographs, you back them up to another drive. Well, most of us do. <laughs> There's another story there. But it's like backing it up. You're taking it, you're taking a photocopy of it, and you can use that photocopy to generate as many tracings from that to replace and put onto a new piece of paper and enjoy it. So... Anyway, there's a little slight digression, but hopefully you got that. Right, now I'm going to come in, and I've got a thick brush. I've got my Skoda. I've got a smaller brush. I don't stop throwing them around. Smaller round brush. Now, this is merely to get paint out of the well without flooding all the wells with this big brush. So I'm simply going to make lots of colour. Now, this colour, I've been debating it a lot, what colour it really is as a blue. And I've gone in last night with a lot of thalocyanine cobalt mixes. Now I've come a little way this way to putting a bit of ultramarine in. What I did last night in the oil, I don't know what that is, head out. I came back with other mixes. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to put some indigo into this mix now. And that will give me that slatier colour. And I'm going to mix another mix of indigo with um, some magenta into that and let that turn towards the violet. Now that may just be too much. May not use these too much at all. We'll see how we go. And I tell you now, that looks like a lot of paint. I can do this with each of the wells and add more pigment into both of them like this. And I probably will still not have 
sufficient for my needs to cover the paper. I may and may not, but it really does need a lot of paint to pre be pre-mixed before you start tackling a big area like this. And the last thing you want it to do, especially when it's hot, is to start drying up on you before you get halfway through the completed subject. It would be awful, but it can happen. So anyway, we have our three colors. Let's just see how we get on. Um, oh, the chick, click, click on the live chat button. See, I don't know it from your end, guys. I see it from my end only, so I see a different thing altogether. Right now, this big mop brush, this is a, a, a Skoda, and it points up beautifully, and it holds a big volume of water. And you can see how that is. Right, let's gonna just get on with this now. Enough of the chat. Quick glug, and off we go. Mm. Yes, Diana, a light box would do the same thing. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that by taking that scan, you've recorded your actual drawing. So the the um, the replacement of that, if something went wrong of course is easy because you can then take a trace or the light box off to to do the job okay let us see where we go with this nice big wash across the back i'm going to already come in with a bit of that other mix to compensate and i want to keep this bead moving i need to keep that moving and you can see a little bit of resistance in the water there that's probably due to a little bit too heavy with the eraser and it can happen. You can leave a bit of residue and you might suffer with that. I'm just going to come across the top with a bit of a darker flush and let that run down. Now here I'm going to be a little careful. I don't need to worry too much about this because it is the head. And of course this part of the head is black so we are not going to worry too much but what I want to do is protect where I come in here against the back I do not want to lose that I want to maintain that lovely white paper now I will go back in and I will soak up some of these blues that are starting to pull I don't want those and I will take that away like so what I can do is I can they're all right for a minute, but not for too long. Take that down like so, take that away. Let this paint here come all the way through the beak and down there like so. That part of it really doesn't matter. It's all the rest here that really does matter. So it's going to take a damp brush. And this is the idea is to take a dampened brush and lift there see how that just sucks away the pigment and whatever remains will run straight back into the area around the bird like so so we have protected that like that now it is a warm evening so what i must do is not allow my mix or my wash to dry the bead is totally totally important if you lose the bead and it dries up anywhere then you have actually lost the battle so you've got to come down here keep this bead wet keep it going this is about to dry up on me so let's get back in here it almost there there's a little line you see that little line through there it is a mistake my mistake but it is nonetheless a mistake i may get rid of it if i can't i will probably come over with another little bit of color just as a bit of a ripple or something there and to lose it completely you won't see it but it's where you just leave things a little too long and that's what will happen you can't afford to be anything less than absolutely vigilant when it comes to this sort of work because you're getting a nice clean crisp line coming down a lovely wash keep that bead working keep it wet here just the same keep that bead working keep that bead nice and wet don't let it dry up come in here 
same values let's come in very carefully very close to being not too careful keep that nice straight leg coming down in here too take that down and we can finish this section off very quickly like so let's bring this down very fast here down here take that away before this edge dries upon me and this is where I say that it's important to have sufficient mix going on. I've let it go and I've lost it. So I'm coming in here with almost the same colour. And this is where you do run risk because I have come in here with a colour that is not quite the same as all that one that I've been mixing. And that's where it will cost me a little bit. Just coming down there with that, take that away. Take it all the way down here but as I'm quite happy that I can tap in darker colors just to um, put that like ripples through here for instance just run that through and suggest that there are other things going on in here and I can also play around with the idea of uh, little highlights using some body color should I need it and if indeed I've lost something like there for instance classic I've not paid attention and I've gone through what should be a bit of leg I shall leave that there it's not a big deal but do be careful easily done so let's take that through there let's take that before it gets too dry and through here before we get lines forming and we've got our beep there which I've just seen coming down here Going down here as fast as I possibly can into this space. And this is where you've got to work fast. This is why working with a small brush is an absolute no no. You can't do a wash of this size with a tiny brush. You do need to have something that will hold volume and it will work for you. Now I've got to bring that into there and just play around with that later on. Let's try and get this working back in here. This space into the water there. And this is drying up on me a little quickly. But let's just come back in. And I'm almost running out of pigment. I can see it in the brush is drying out. So here I have got to work a little faster. I'm going to put a bit more color together. Just like so. A little bit of alizarin just in there. Let's just pump that away very, very quickly. And okay. So we've got a few marks that I don't really like, but I'm going to come back in while this is damp and just play around with putting some other values in. I'm going to come through with some of them like so. It's not what I wanted to do at this stage, but I will do it. I will come in with a few negative spaces as ripples into the water here a few around there these will start to suggest that little line take your lines away off the paper otherwise you end up with horrible marks now this could go wrong and i feel that it i'm losing it a little bit gotta say it's going to come in with a few like so and it's always a problem okay let's leave that like that let's hope that i can keep this if not I'll, i may even wash it again i don't know but hopefully i don't have to i like not to keep doing that and what's happened is where i've gone a little bit other colors it's just picked up so it may need some more work and I'm just sitting on it at the moment and just seeing where that goes. Sitting to one side, um, just keep, excuse me, keeping an eye on all of this. It can create natural shapes that are good. Sorry, there seems to be a child screaming outside in the street somewhere. I don't know what that's about. Maybe it needs feeding. I don't know. I'm being rude. There's nothing wrong with the child, it's just me. But uh, yeah, okay, so some of this I'm not happy with here. And it can always work against you. 
So I'm looking at it and it's where there are very different values of water working in the paper that you're working with and it can come back and bite you like this one has. So I'm just sitting and talking to you and hoping it will sort out. Uh, yeah, I'm. I because I'm. The reason I'm doing that, Diana, is because uh, I have a lot of paint mixed up, and that's what I was dipping into. What I didn't have was, unfortunately, enough paint uh, mixed up. So I have got a situation here that could get out of hand very, very quickly. I'm trying to in a sense, resurrect, take that into that leg, like so, and resurrect some of these shapes coming into here, down here, down into here, like that, because they will leave me hard edges. I know if I put a hairdryer on any of this right now, I will regret it. So I'm trying to work the whole thing and just keep the paint moving around a little bit just to give me that shape. I'm gonna try and tap off some of this. This area here I know is gonna be an issue. I'm just taking that off. I said that was a child screaming outside. It's not, it's actually that next door's yappy little dog. Um, I forgot how high pitched that bark is, but uh, it seems to be sort of almost left outside. They're good parents, don't get me wrong, they, they look after their dog. I'm not suggesting they don't, it's just that it seems to be out and it doesn't want to be out, it wants to be in, so it barks. Okay, that's something else I've got to address. I'm just trying now, if I can, to soften some of these edges without making a huge problem. This is a little bit of damage limitation, I've got to say, to be honest with you, it is very much damage limitation trying to make this work. What I might do is just turn it upside down for a minute and work this way, because I'm working it over myself. Paint underneath is not dry enough, and I know it's causing a problem. What I think I might just do, you know, is mix up a great big pile of paint. I think this is going to be all I can do on this. Rather frustrating. And I will go and shoot that dog in a minute. I promise I won't. I promise I won't. Um, okay, now then I am going to come back in here with this wash and take it all the way down, all the way through here. I have quite honestly obliterated most of my reflection at that point. You can see what's happening is that it's picking up all the paint underneath. This is almost like a beginner error. That I've created but it happens some things don't go right and this is a perfect and classic reason to take copies of your painting so that you can not have this situation occur and run it all the way dark into here and it come all the way down hopefully by the time we get another wash on a bit more control it might allow me just to rescue this like so taking it down through here and that line around I'm quiet because I'm concentrating.
Do more water with it now. Let it just fade away here and through here. Like so lots more water into this part here. Okay, now I'm going to sit and talk to you for a little while while that is just holding up out of picture a little bit. I've got it wedged up at an angle and I hopefully that will stay where I want it to just for a bit while that starts to work this way. So there is still some imperfections in it. I can't change all of it, but hopefully there will be sufficient. Uh, yeah it happens um, it does happen it does happen but there you go if we can get out of it and rescue it somehow then job sorted just taking some of these lines out and let that pigment run into the space right there and let it run off around here gently just tapping some of that away letting that run in I'm hoping because I've actually put a lot more color into this that it might dry up a bit lighter I'm hoping that that's the case Okay, so we're going to have to wait for a little while just to see how this pans out. Um, it is somewhat darker than I ever wanted it to be um, for the picture. Um, masking fluid can damage, but the other thing about masking fluid gives a very, very hard edge. Very hard once the painting is dry around it to take it off and feather in and soften that. It can be done, but it's not easy. Okay, bear with me people, I don't really want to use the hair dryer, if I can help it. I'm hoping any lines that remain I can tweak and put extra things in, but I really do wish I could have made it just a bit paler in places. It's just a little bit heavy in terms of the pigment for my own liking. but. I can't do too much with that. If I start messing about now, the problems I had before will return and that will be the end of this picture. Um, but it's what, whatever it is, it can't be helped. Just teasing some of this around. I'll take some of that out if I can. But if I'm going to do that, then the, the thing is, is just to tap it back in so that you don't have a spread like that. Tap it off. Hmm. Not quite how I worked, wanted it to be, but there you go. We shall see. I still got to be patient and wait. I think I will get the hair dryer on it now. I think it's had a little time to settle, so we will see what happens. Let's see if I can find where I put the hair dryer.
thing about masking fluid, uh, in all honesty, is that um, it's a case that um, if the paper is damp in any way, when you try and remove it, you'll just tear into it. And if you, like somebody I saw just now said that if you leave it on too long, it too will damage and you'll not get it off. So it's got a couple of caveats when using it. But the hardest thing is, of course, it can leave very, very hard edges. And it is not always, unless you use a very fine pen style, easy to get very fine lines with it. And so that's the only thing you've got to be careful of. But otherwise, it's okay. I'm not a great lover, but I have used it in the past and do use it from time to time. Okay, this has dried up a little lighter than it was but it is still not I'm not that happy not in overall terms but it's okay uh, okay Katriana thank you oh Kate sorry I keep forgetting that hi Kate good evening to you um, yeah uh, I'm sure you'll catch up in the morning or whenever okay for my black I'm going to be using uh, not black I don't use black. I'm going to be using some neutral tint, which is a very nice dark. I'm going to be using some of my indigo blue. Um, but I want to be using some orange. So that will turn that and give me that nice brownish color. These birds are predominantly black, but they do tend to have little brownish tints to them. And their American cousins, of course, are very, very brown where their blacks are. So I'm just going to put that in. I will be working with a finer brush. So I'm just mixing up the colour. And I will go in with a smaller brush now. Uh, to give myself that much more control. So at the bad end I've got a number four round. And I'm going to, I can rest on here. But I will take, take a, an extra precaution. And just put a cloth down. And just start looking at the finer points of this bird. So I'm going to come in here and just literally draw. And you've got to be so careful here too, because you can't take it off. If this was an oil, you can put on and you can take off. But you can't do that easily at this juncture with your watercolour. So just take it steady. Watch carefully what you're doing. Try and keep your beak straight, sharp. And... If it's tapered, a correct taper. If it's parallel, a nice parallel. But don't forget, everything you put on here will dry up lighter. So if you want it really dark, then use a lot of pigment and not too much water. Okay, I think we've got that. I'm going to come up over the head now, and that will put that nice darkness in against the background. Now, it could have been done a little bit lighter on the background, but it made the dark on the head show up that much more. But that is the issue that I had in what I did. I take it and just leave a little light around where the eye is there and then bring that all the way through to here now i'm not going to go much further than that on this part i just want to show you how that dark is going to work because what i want to do is come in with the subtle white values now we've got a nice white piece of paper so i'm going to be using subtle changes in those whites to affect my shadows, my lights, etc. I'm going to use some cobalt. Let's take that out of the way. Use some cobalt. A little bit of uh, ultramarine violet in there. And I've got some raw sienna. A little tap of vermilion into that. Now I've got a couple of bits to go on. I'm going to leave that brush there and I'm going to come for a medium round. This one uh, is a number 10, and actually that's not a very good one. I don't know how that got in my pot. 
but it's an old one and it's lost its point and the point is very very important so just looking around for another one to take its place there we go what have we got i don't even know what that one is one or two of my older brushes seem to have crept into my um assortment of brushes let's take them out so i don't pick them up by mistake and let's come in this is the beastie okay we've got a nice number seven Winsor newton sable round sable very nice brush now i'm just going to come in here and i'm just going to tap in a few soft variants to the fur and i'm picking up a little bit of the black at the top there it wasn't by choice but it actually doesn't matter at all be careful though you got too much um orange on it will turn it quite green so let's just come back in and warm this up through the chest now this is where i wanted to be a little better at uh, sorting out my edges but we lost a little bit but i think we actually haven't lost too much so i'm just going to come in here with a few soft tints of wash maybe even just a few bluish ones reflecting the water up under the tail and the vent feathers and let that come down i'm going to let each section dry off a little bit before i continue on like so and we've got a few grayish ones i said in the top here so i'm going to put some of those in warmish and grayish now it doesn't matter if i come through here with some of this it's like a medium version of the darker feather so we can sort of suggest those in like so across there and we don't mind going into there with it i want to soften it off overall and let that run up in here break that out give it a very very soft edge so we don't see any hard edges bring some light into there take some of that and lift it off keep running out of paper now that you've got to be careful of i dropped some on the paper that i was resting on that will go through and cause you a problem here so just watch little things like that i am quite a messy painter at some point i do uh, agree with anybody who says that about me i can get quite messy but at the end of the day, uh, if you're vigilant, you won't let these things stop and cause a problem. Just looking at where shadows are forming, little shapes, little taps, just dropping in bits of raw color here and there. Take that across to there. Picking up of that bit of grey there deliberately. Bring that down into there. Um, Paul, good evening to you, mate. No problem about being late. As long as you're here and you're enjoying it, that's the main thing. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow into there. Maybe tap a little bit of a darkish colour in there. Let that bleed. Take that up to there. Lifting colours off and putting on. I mean, with a bit of that dark colour, a little bit of the um, yellow as well, just come up under there. As one layer is drying, another one is being laid down on it. Warming some of these up and just why that's damp, suggesting that there are little bits of white feather or lighter feathers just popping through in one or two places like so. And you can come in with something that is maybe a little darker up in here. Suggest that idea 
let it fade out. There is quite a hard edge to that, which I will put in further down. I'm going to put a bit more yellow in the terms of raw sienna into that. A bit more water with that mix. And coming in with the same sort of idea here. And around under here. It is going to be a different colour overall, but we're just suggesting a warm background to it as it were. Letting some of those colours from underneath pop back in. Okay, I'm going to come in with a little bit of blue this time, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Just tapping that into that yellow to see where that goes and where we need to take that. might do nicely up there as well. Nice little ripple edge on the feathers. Just tease them around a little bit. Just bring them out. Like so I think that works. And come back in with a bit of warmth into that yellow. Just to warm that into there. I don't want it obviously red, but I just want it warmer. And while we got that dampness working, let's make it work how we want it. And that little bit of warmth actually works very well overall. There's not too much of it in the picture as a whole, and it does work if we can put a little bit of warmth and red in as the only sort of warm accent in the whole thing. If it comes to that then it still works. That's good. Try to keep that fairly clean there. Little subtleties, little areas that suggest edges of feathers coming in. Little warms, little cools, little bits of light. And to some of these darks I will put a little bit of body colour, possibly towards the end, back in, just as little flecks. I want to drop in some dark colours, uh, especially under where this leg comes up in a minute. We're going to put a little bit of dark in there and under there. Maybe a little bit too on the blue side, so let's just come back and add a little bit of warmth into that. That will dry out and we can come back in and lift a little bit out here and there if we feel the need to. Our two darks as this comes back up into here. And quite a bit of dark still to be done up in here. This area here is not as dark as this, so we can't make this blank, but we do need it quite dark. Alright, I'm going to come in. That's bleeding through and not quite what I wanted. I'm going to put the brush heavily down on there and lift off, dry it out and just bring that hard edge down there. And I want to drop some more in the front here. Now this has dried off a bit so I can come in here and do that. With that nice area right there into the front of the leg like that. Maybe a little darker, a bit warmer. And I can't lose some of that where I went over with the blue too far. Like that. And maybe a bit of orange into there. 
don't want it going too high up there, just a little sharp edge there. Soften that with a damp brush. just tapping colour into the dampness that is the bird's chest. Lifting some of that back and just setting back. Now I've got to be careful I don't lose too much of white. I can't touch any more of that up there. Although I've left myself a bit of a hard edge which I can't really lose and I can't really lift too much. If I do, I'm just going to take what little bit of white paper's left out of it. So I'm going to have to be put up with that. And leave it. I'm going to come in and mix some more darker. I'm going to put a lot of pigment, not to too much water. I want my blacks to be very, very strong. A bit of red in there too. It's a very, very strong. You can see how much pigment's going on in there, but there's not too much in in the forms of um, the water. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to carry on where I had got to, taking this all the way round. And that dives down into that. I come in here with an eye. This may or may not, I don't know, probably not actually, I think I caught that just about right. And I'm putting a little bit warm colour into this dark, making that a real sort of more of a brownie black than a blue black. And that will help me against that deeper blue um, water line. So I'm going to do that into there. Tap that down against the eye a little bit more, lose a little bit of that, that's better. Caught the eye, just just got that nicely. Really pleased with the eye, because that doesn't take a lot to go wrong. And I'm just going to drop in a little bit of dark on the lower mandible. And hopefully there'll be sufficient at the top to remain uh, good and crisp. I come down here with more of this dark now into here. may have to, because the top's had a different go, this may to need another layer, but we shall come back and judge it in a moment or two. Let's come back in here with that lovely soft shape through here. And it just fades into sort of nothingness. Not a point and not exactly a curve. It's just a nice sweep on this part here. Right, so. Okay, let's keep on. Let's come on with this line up through here. Nice, sharp. But now you can start working. If any of you have watched me when I've painted my uh, trees and leaves and things where I've come in with darker colours against lighter ones and I've used that to create negative space so that the lights actually push up into the darks because I'm painting the dark into the light if you can remember that then uh, I'm doing the same thing here these blacks will punch beautifully with all the lights and I can just tap one or two shapes off of them to give the sense of the feathers movement and shape into the white areas around them. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to bring that over there. That's quite deep at that point, like so. And 
up again and then that got a nice swip, soft movement over the back there and then disappears into that shape there okay again I will probably have to tweak some of these come up, come back in with a very fine shape and that mark there which comes up and down and then I am looking at this flight feather here first keeping it really sharp as this comes up into that area there little fold over in a sense starts the bow over just a little bit and into the darkness of that and then into the blue just leave that don't play around with it just see what happens this one's got a little subtle shape that's shorter goes and comes in at a slightly different angle so the two come together and form and look as though they are one but of course we know they're not like so and then you just get a little tap about there of one but just reappearing again okay uh, thank you judy appreciate that i'm gonna have a little glug little half time orange <laughs> We are, oh, we're at an hour 18, so a little bit beyond half time orange, but there you go. Apologize for that. Needed. A bit dry. Um, okay. Let's carry on. So far, so good. Let's come in with this nice shape here. And now I look at this blue. And now I, I've always said to everybody, you know, when you want something around to look lighter, make everything around it look darker. And it really is the point about it that, you know, you've got these dark shapes coming in. And all of a sudden, my blue is not looking as dark as I had feared. It's still not 100% perfect. I will not even try and kid you that it is. It could have been a bit better. But it's not a disaster either, so I'm not totally uh, suicidal over the appearance of this blue. Now I'm putting in those scallops a little bit more deliberately because I've got the paint and I can do that. Just checking my shapes and my forms. Okay. There's that little dark shape that we haven't actually put into there. I need to increase that. Because that's that little feather that's raised up. A couple of little marks this way. Just softened it with a bit of water. I don't want to go any closer to that towel. I do not want it to bleed in. I'm going to use some of this dark and just tuck in the little areas that should be dry enough to do that with and it is thank goodness and a little bit there and then i will reinforce those little jaggly bits on the tail flights that are going down through there and i'm going to come underneath and i'm going to reinforce the little dart that's under there doesn't need to be as black, but if you're going over some of this again, then this one will not need to go over again. It's sufficiently dark to do the little job I need it to do, is just to give that dark shadowy accent underneath the bird, especially through here, against where that blue paint caused a few problems. Less said the better. I think the recovery is going quite well. <laughs> He says, touching wood. Um, right, how many are we? 21. We were up a bit more than that. And I haven't seen Leora of late. I hope she's okay. Um, right, I'm going to come in with a bit of blue. And I'm going to put in a little bit of lemon. Making that lovely greenish colour. And today I'm going to put a little bit of red into that. And I'm going to put a lot of water to that. And let's see what that looks like in a minute. 
I want to come down the legs for that. I'm just setting that up. Right, okay, now where are we? Um, pretty much the darks are done. There's not much left to do. Checking one or two shapes and maybe just sort of little lines up here. Just suggesting where the feathers are just creeping off a little different little shape. But you can also come unstuck like we're making little uh, flows that you don't want to happen by allowing the paint to get too wet as you do that. So just be aware that you don't want to go too mad with anything like that. Um, I need to put a bit more shadow and shape under the throat there. There's a little section there which is coming off and then a little darker shape under the throat like that. It comes to nothing but it is just enough to make a nice extra shadow into the throat area and just into there. Maybe a tap of blue a bit of cobalt into that. That's that nice damp, just drop that in and let that work its magic at that point. Okay. <clears throat> now I would like to try and lift here be careful, very, very damp brush. Well, not very damp, almost dry brush. I just want to lift a little bit of light at the top of the beak at that point. That's doing very, very nicely. Now the trick is to know when to stop without messing it up. I'm just going to do a very light tap at that point. Let that settle. And that gives me that lovely little bit of... Uh, light that is sitting right at the bridge or the top of the beak there. And that's all gone, that has gone, I like this part a lot, I really do, I've got to say. It's done very well. Okay, now I'm going to put a bit of blue into that mix first off. And I'm going to carefully come down and see what I can do about recovering these legs. They are a pale bluish colour, but there's also some warmth in them. So I don't want to lose them. I'm going to tap that colour in and stain the paper and then just carry on down with the same idea. Stain that, put it in, stain the paper, lift it off a little bit. And then I might come over with a little bit of vermilion, a very, very soft, watery amount just to run that warmth into that. Probably a little too heavy, so I can take that out and it's just going to pump in one or two places, warm and cool, like so. Let that run down to there. Try and do the same if I can on the other side. Even though that's in shadow there, I'm going to still repeat the operation all the way down through here into here, just tap that off, like so, come back in with a bit of warmth over some of that, and that's what we're going to have to dry up, and in here we've got a nice mishmash of darks and lights in the shadow, in the reflection, sorry. I'm going to put that in. Just let that run through. And we can't see too much of it. I'm just going to run a bit of shadow that should suggest this area here. Running up. Maybe a bit of blue. bit of warmth in there as well, a little bit of red suggesting and a bit of raw sienna. I love that raw sienna, it works very very well just to give it that yellowness. Okay, and I'm going to tap some of that out which suggests the area of the leg coming down. So just lift some of that and create the stain. 
which we can come back in and play around with. I didn't want a solid colour there. I just wanted to vary it up a little bit, suggesting what's going on, but not too much. And very similarly, a little greyer form of the leg. Now, this is, looks like it's got all bent over, but it's just the way that this whole thing ended up going with the blue paint. So I'm suggesting that in there like so. We will have to make some allowance with some um, other colours, some of the um, white gouache later on. I'm going to have to do a little bit of doctoring and hopefully we're going to have some form of reflection here. I can't do too much because I lost an awful lot of ground when I did this but there is a little subtle lift. I'm just gently teasing away some of that blue paint from this area here if I can, if it will allow me to do that. It might end up with a bit of a hard back edge. But I'm prepared to give that a go. I've got to be very gentle because what will happen is this will go so far and then the poor old paper will start to give up. So I'm just gently trying to tease this out without gouging it. might be enough to do the job I don't know yet hopefully this is dry enough now we can come back in there's a little bit of cobalt into there a little bit of red into the cobalt just come back down with a little area of lovely reddish violet through here just give a shape to the back of the ankle there and the front and that come down 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 and down into the water Okay, and it's looking better. Let's say I'm going to use the same idea to lose some of that against the leg at that point. Come on down the side here. Lovely little violet colours, sort of mixing up between red and blue, but they're not quite any of the other. So they just come on down and break that leg through there. And hopefully that's starting to work for me. I think this painting does need a, a break to, to win through. I think that's down through there like that. Okay, I'm going to let that area dry up. I want to come in with some a bit of indigo into that, deep into that black that we've got there. So I'm making a rather blue-black. And I want to come in with the shadow under here. Doing it a little bit at a time, just to suck it and see. And this wants to be a very, very good shadow because it will make a lot of recovery for my leg that uh, has sort of suffered in the painting process. Okay, well hopefully that will do that job. And I'm going to, that's a little bit too damp still. I come around here and bring this dark around the back of the elbow and that down through here and hopefully we can trim that leg up and get that working. So far so good. I'm going to come back in here on this, this one's elbow at that point, tidy that up, take a little line that's not quite there but we're going to put it in anyway just to give that correct shape or better shape not correct there you go it could have been thinner but I've made it thicker it works for my problems in this area and I'm going to stick with that I'm going to come in with this nice shadow that comes across here like that down the leg so far and down like that and then that will come on and continue down past there on into the water at that point. <sighs> yeah, so that's one way of putting it. 
We're getting there though. We are winning. It's not all over until the fat lady sings. Isn't that what they say? According to one film I love. Right, that just does that one. And we are not yet there yet. We have got a little bit of tension on the back of this leg here where the water is. And we've got a very much the same thing here, which I'm going to put in there. And that will start to suggest the shadow coming down the side of this foot, which I'm going to bring in from down here like so. And that is a problem, but we will deal with that problem. Never let it be said that I can't try and work through a problem. And I'm just going to ripple some of this as it comes down. Oh, I don't know what happened, but I, I think the problem was something to do with the OBS. I uh, hopefully I I figured it out. I don't know quite what I did, but I did press a lot of things, and I started swearing at it, and I think it just got frightened of me swearing at it. Um, I couldn't be too much swearing, just in case you guys could hear what I was saying. <laughs> Okay, well, we have got some people back. I think we've lost some that have given up waiting. I do apologise for that, everybody. I don't know quite what the cause was. But um, hopefully we can finish this off. I was pretty pleased with what was going on down here. I will continue now and hopefully get to the end of this before we lose it all again. And I think it's just one of those things. It's a glitch. It happened. Uh, art speak. Yes, it's art speak. I don't swear. I never swear. Always art speak. <laughs> Cheers, Wendy. Nearly forgot. All right. So anyway, a little bit more dark. Oh, my paint's dried up. Waiting now. Look at that. I'm going to come in with a few warmer values of blues and reds going on in there. A little bit violety, I suppose. And just try and work some of that negative space and use some of the lights that I've still got. And bear in mind that the light or white in here is going to be darker than the white up in there. Because it is, at the end of the day, a lovely little reflection. Just going to bring some off in here. Like so. Okay, and maybe a few bits up in here also. Um, stream says it's healthy now and a good connection. I think it was the OBS played about again because when I tried to switch the OBS Ben off it uh, needed force, forcing off. I think something had gone wrong in the OBS tonight unfortunately. Just coming in back in with a bit more dark on there it's dried off quite light. Not a problem because I actually did need it to feather out to light lower down. So that was very useful. I'm going to come back in here with another layer over that there. And that's all fine. I'm just playing around with some of these lights and darks through here just to make it work a little bit more in our reflection. There are one or two darks appearing up in here. I'm going to put a few of those in there. And let that stop. One or two darker pieces in here. Not to go over the white too much. I want to do that. Just one or two suggestions. And 
I did go a bit here a little bit funny I wasn't quite sure but I'm just going to suggest the beak in a sort of jagged motion like so coming back up into what could be a bit of the head here bending over a bit more it's not quite in the right place but it's the best way to disguise what I've got there okay um, I'm done with that part I want to play around with maybe some body color and I want to play around with also some um, bit of um, lights and darks in here as well just want to put this make a little bit stronger here in the water and a bit on the kick at the back here like so play that off let that just softly come into this area softly around to the base of the foot there like so and there are one or two like little bubbly type things so let's just put in a little bubble like so nothing much just a little tap a little reflection of itself and we've got a little bubble i hope that looks like a bubble it may not look like a bubble and i come in with a bit of a dirty blue just want to start looking at this area on here and this is almost going to be dry brush effects. Maybe a little wetter. Especially as I feather it off over the back. Okay. making that go in the wrong direction so I've just changed the course a little bit not a problem easily done at that point taking the line of dark through behind there and there so we've got a continuation and then out through the back here and just more suggestions suggest only you don't have to make it actual just little suggestions of what's going on. Okay, we're still together and we're back up to speed with everybody. That's good. I'm sorry about that. Anybody who just have come in in the last few minutes again to see what's going on and see what happened to it. We had a problem with the um, OBS system here that just uh, kicked out, I think, and just destroyed the stream quality, and then it just dropped. Whether that or whether my internet failed a little bit and that's what caused the OBS to fail, I will never know. I'm not technical enough to understand any of that sort of thing. So we will just have to accept that lucky I got back on and uh, by turning one off and putting the other one on that it worked a little bit of line through there so it looks like you can see there's disturbance in the water and I'm going to close that back up into that part there a little bit like so and I'm going to put in one or two little bits of something in there that's just floating away a little bit of water like so and these are these little bits that I spoke of I'm going to make them a little warmer, a bit of the blue, a bit of the brown, and another glug of water. Uh, thank you, Heather. That's very, very kind of you. I'm glad you all found your way back. Um, all right. So just carrying on with this little bit on tweaking one or two bits. That needs to be a lot darker. Just come in and make that a mix of indigo and orange. Those are the same, my favorite colors. Let's come back in on that one. And this is where little areas of mud and crustacean shells, a bit like you see on the seaside, but they are just appearing where the water is getting um, 
a little bit shallow uh, behind the bird and what have you and I'm going to do a little bit through there and deliberately coming through the leg at this point and suggesting that there's something going there and that breaks up that little bit of paint that I had a problem with earlier on I hope we can do that and he's still with us from America Jim he's still there um, yeah I'm sure you are not unless your internet's broken as it happens and just putting a little bit more dark into what would have been the beak into there suggest that and just one or two little bits that are just floating through remember if you put a, a, a an object that way then your reflection is going to come that way do it again let's uh, just run that a little bit there mess that up different one on a different plane maybe a bit more maybe a little lump like that let's say a little larger lump I don't want to put anything over here. There are one or two bits, but I don't think we need to just maybe take something as far as that. I think it's probably all that needs to be done. You can always add to it if you want to put more in, but I don't think it really needs it. A little bark up there. All right. Now I'm going to come in with some body colour because we are almost at two hours and I do apologise once more for that um, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I didn't get lost too long in America it's a big area to get lost in Jim you'd have had to have sent something out to, to find me I'm just going to come around silly I'm going to come in with a little bit of light around one or two places like there just to suggest that there are little bits of white feather just catching and this is where the white gouache in this case is really going to work for me now that has got a bit further over than I've got it but I'm going to not worry too much with that and I'm not going to touch my eye I just love the eye that I've got so I'm going to come in with just one or two little flicks against the black to suggest the very fine feathers just popping in to our bird at that point. Just one or two little taps, nothing special. And maybe a couple up around the top of the bee here just to give that a little bit more light there just at this point and just tap that in very very gently you can always go too far and regret it a little bit of light there which has been lost I'm going to put that in and then just one or two taps through here put more water into my mix want to do little bits of feather that are over that edge there and go up nothing much you don't want to overdo it you do too much and just got to keep going and going and going I just wanted to tap in a few areas that are just catching the odd little bit of light especially under this area here and an area just there where I've caught that just to bring that up a little bit tap it away and lose it not making it too strong there we go okay I'm 
get into that grey area where I just better stop. Um, but I want to put a little light down the back end of this leg and drag it off. Just want to clean up that blue that I lost and drag it off. Just sort of reinforcing the light that was there without being too much. Okay, do I need to do that anywhere else? Probably, but I don't think I ought to do too much more. Let's straighten that up through there. Doesn't look like it's broken. Through there. And then straight down through there. Maybe a little bit there and just model it like a reflection. Okay. Well, I'm going to uh, put the reference to this, everybody. I know I keep saying it before, Teresa. You say anything to me, I know what you're going to say. Why didn't I put the other reference? I do apologize, everybody. I've just been very, very busy this week. It's been one of those, and um, hopefully. I will look to my Saturday down the gallery and try and hone in on many of the pictures that need to go up onto Patreon so that you can download them and use them. And don't forget, any of you guys that are not Patreons, if it's a streaming reference like this one, you are free to download it for your own use, not for commercial uses, uh, and get something from it. And I hope so. So if you're not a patron, but you want to use this one, pop over to my Patreon. Have a look at that while you're there anyway. But um, by all means, download the reference to the Avocet and other streaming content that I've done. And have a go at these yourself. It'd be great. I'm just going to sign this off now. I'm going to put in a little paint. I don't like signing it too strong. I do like to be a little more subtle with them. And this will dry a lot lighter. When it's done, there we go. Just clean the brush, set to one side, and let's have a reveal. And um, see what see what we ended up with. Bear with me. I did a set the other day, or yesterday actually. I filmed. Um, one of next week's painting lessons for YouTube and it was a series of six skies. Now those of my students will remember I was playing around in class the other day painting little sky swatches. And I've done a very similar thing but I did them on a one panel and I did great but when I took the tape off it literally started ripping into them. So it was a little lesson to learn that, you know, you've got to be careful. Not all papers are totally forgiving and allow you to do that. And this particular paper was not such. Anyway, there we are. One Avocet. It was nearly an absolute disaster. But um, it wasn't quite um, a disaster it very nearly was though hope you've enjoyed it i uh, love the nearly finished result paul sorry i have to dash off thanks for the references that's okay they're a bit late really appreciate getting the reference no it's cool i will get them done hopefully tomorrow and so that you can enjoy them and play around with them but i hope you got something from this everybody uh, it was probably i have to say one of the more traumatic paintings i've done <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be easy because of the complexity of the bird, but I did not think that the bird would become the easiest part and this would give me the big problem. Uh, it's just the way it goes sometimes, but... Um... <laughs> Cheers, Jim. I appreciate the candor. Uh, yeah, so anyway, there we are. One Avocet and um, one watercolour of said Avocet. It's been interesting, and not to mention the absolute screw up with the internet part way through this. 
Um, but uh, hopefully you got something from it anyway. I've enjoyed it. And uh, don't forget my weekly painting channel has also got a new video on it every Friday, guys and girls. Uh, it's all about painting trees. It's uh, the second one in the Quick and Easy series. So take a look at that if you want to and enjoy it. Don't forget to like it, comment on it and subscribe if you're not a subscriber to my channel. Click that bell icon and that will be fantastic because at the end of the day subscribing and all these things cost you nothing to do. You don't get paid, you don't have to pay anything for it. But it does help me grow my audience and that is what YouTube as a system is looking for that people enjoy the content that is being put onto their servers and if people like it they will help promote it so the more of that I get from you guys the better uh, the algorithms within YouTube will interpret what I'm doing and help push my channel that's what I'm trying to do and the more people that see it the better it gets and everything I'm doing is becoming more and more worthwhile and I'm reaching more and more people and with regards to the Patreon if any of you guys out there want some more from me you want more tutorials you want more connection with me and you want to help learn more from me in other words I can help you more directly with the work that you're doing then consider joining the Patreon there's a lot to be done there's a lot happening there lots of content several of my uh, viewers here tonight are subscribers already but there's tons of room for an unlimited amount and uh, you get so much more from me moving forward and including an interactive Facebook page where we can all talk to each other so give it a thought if you are a painter and you're watching this and you want to get some more nip onto my patreon have a look at it uh, the details are in underneath any of my videos take a look and if you want to get involved it's normally what cup of coffee couple of cups of coffee a month not a lot but you get a lot for it okay with that all said i'm going to start rambling soon uh... <laughs> thanks wendy um yeah I, I i didn't pull my hair out and have a hissy fit but i could have done it got close at one point I was, but we got there and we got a nice reasonable looking ever set out of the picture so yeah not so bad not so bad at all uh do it see you mate take care i will see you on monday don't forget everybody my live stream on monday is an oil but this week is going to be a bird again not an ever set but it will be another bird you will see the advert come up probably tomorrow or sunday which will start promoting the uh, live stream, oil live stream on Monday evening at 7 o'clock London time. So with that all said, thank you very much everybody. I'm going to take a well earned break. I'm going to go and have a nice Guinness and a sit down and relax and enjoy a bit of TV. <laughs> or will I? I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, have fun everybody. Have a fab weekend. I know I'm busy tomorrow, but I'm going to enjoy my Sunday and Monday. And I dare say there's going to be a fair bit of filming involved, a hell of a lot of painting involved. Uh, but that's the thing that makes me buzz and I love it. So if you're serious about painting, paint, find time to paint and draw each and every day. And in the meantime, take care, stay safe, enjoy the days, talk to you very, very soon. A Spitfire bird from Jerry. <laughs> yeah, if I had a Spitfire, it's one of my favourite ones, Tracy. And I'm sorry, Tracy, I never said good evening to her. I saw your name pop up and then I got involved. I do apologise. But good evening and good night. And good night to Jerry too. Um, but yeah. All said and done. I'll leave the chat going for a little while longer so people can say their goodbyes to each other, everyone. And I will look forward to catching everybody soon. Kate, thanks. I'm glad you liked it. Sue, I'm glad you like it. And I'm going to relax, as you say. Heather, uh, thank you very much. I hope you get to grips with it. And maybe email me uh, with the result. Let me see how you get on. And with anybody on doing that. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, I'm not sure how you say your thing. Is it D bold eight? D bold eight? I'm not quite sure, but uh, we have all been there, my friend. And thank you very much for joining the stream tonight. I uh, don't know where you're from, and I don't know what your first name is, but that's cool. That's great. Uh, Chasing that man of you. <laughs> yeah, I've got to say he is. Glennis, thank you very much for joining us, and I hopefully see you on Monday. I'll talk to you again on Monday. And to anybody else who's sitting on the side, um, I look forward to catching each and every one of you again on Monday night. Look forward to it. And I've got all weekend to prepare. Whoop, we carry on. All good. All good. Ben, good evening. Yes, I will talk to you tomorrow on the very, on the very word of OBSs after I've given you your one-to-one -one lesson, my friend. Uh, look forward to that. And uh, we can have some fun and a chat while that goes on. And uh, all be at masks at dawn. <laughs> anyway, everybody is winding down now, so I'm going to switch the chat off. Let each of you get off with your evenings and carry on doing stuff. So, take care, everyone. Bye bye. Catch you all soon. Talk to you on Monday. Bye. Oh, I will, Wendy. I will. <laughs>